Um, like I said, my heart goes out to Tim Zoo because it's like not only did he have a matchup with uh, um with the inactive uh, Keith Thurman, who we didn't know what he was going to do. Then he had, you know, that, that's one thing. You know, you don't, you don't know what kind of show Tim Keith Thurman or Keith Billy is going to bring to the ring. Number two, Keith Thurman got injured, man. He had a bison injury. He had to pull out the fight. Number three, the, the person that replaced him was somebody coming off a loss. You don't know how the fanfare is going to go with that, you know, in Fedora. Then Fedora, not only that, he's a tall, awkward guy. Number four, he's 6'5", or 6'6", six, six, really, 6'5 six, and a half to be exact, and then he's a southpaw. Oh my gosh, bro, a uh, 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 freaking, I, I call, I call, uh, I call Tim Zoo Limity Smicket, man. A series of unfortunate of events transpired, man. And then, not only was he 6'5", in the southpaw, then he had to take him in 12 days notice. You see what I'm saying? And then it gets worse. Then they finally get in the fight where he where he, where he break where he uh busts open Fedora's mouth. And then in the second round he gets cut with a devastating elbow, man. Bullshit! 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 Roly Romero and Esau People Cruiser, my opinion, should have been moved up to the main event, but hey, it, it doesn't matter. It's all good. They're fighting for Roly Romero's title at Super Lightweight, a uh, 140-pound division, and then it was an action-packed fight, man. I, I'm talking about Roly Romero. I think, I'm, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the first round. That boy had that man doing a stanky leg. Oh, <laughs> Sure enough, we were right, and Pitbull got to him in the eighth round stoppage. And you know, Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins had something to say about it. Check him out right here. <laughs> From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGAGM. Praise God to get money. Back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Y'all know what it is. The doctor's in the house. Yes, doc is here. Back again after an amazing night of boxing, man. Shout out to PBC and the Amazon Prime pay-per-view event, man. That was a dope night of boxing. Amazon boxing, PBC boxing. Shout out to Al Heyman. Yes, sir. Hey, shout out to all the fighters, most importantly. But today, y'all know what it is, man. This is three-minute round rundown, man. 3MRR. Y'all know what it is. It's episode 13. I can't believe it. Big episode 13. But just for you there, just for you all that are unfamiliar familiar with the segment which you should be right now you know it says 13 episodes we going crazy it's where i squeeze all the events that transpired for the night of boxing before and put it into one three minute round bout because i feel like hey man people have got knocked out in three minutes so i could give y'all all the information all the pertinent information in one concise three minute round professional bout of boxing so let's get right to it man Let's go. Don't forget to like the video. I appreciate it. Bring up the clock right there. Let's get it. I, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we get started, I want to let y'all know. I'm probably not going to make the time. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot to talk about. But I'm going to try my best. I might need two, three minute rounds. You know what I'm talking about? But let's get right to it, man. Bring up the clock. Bow. All right, let's go, man. First off, we're going to start off with the undercards, man. The undercards had... um. You know, some preliminary bouts, you know, had Kermel Moten, you know, coming out of uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather's camp, you know, the young prodigy, you know what I'm saying? He fought another undefeated fighter, Cuba, and, um, you know, they're, they, had, they had a nice war. Moten won by decision, convincingly, but they, hey, they, had, they, had some, they had some great moments where they both were exchanging some pretty big shots. All right, so let's go forward. We're going we go to keep it fast now. We're going to keep it fast, man. You know, I'm loquacious, but I'm going to try to bring my talking down to a minimum. So we got, um next up, we had uh, Brian Mendoza. Man, it's just so crazy how life goes, man. Life is wild. Boxing is wild, too. You know, uh, Brian Mendoza, he went against, uh, what's that, Bulachuk, uh, the Ukrainian fighter. Um, last time we saw Brian Mendoza, he actually knocked out Sebastian Fondor, who we'll get to later. And, uh, but now he's coming, coming back. And um, he actually got beat up pretty bad, man. The, the the was it the left side of his face, I believe, was swollen up pretty bad, man. Bulachuk won that by decision. The Ukrainian, you know what I'm saying? And it's funny that he that last time we saw Brian Mendoza, he knocked out Sebastian Fedora. You know what I'm saying? In the sixth or seventh round, I believe. So it's just crazy how 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 life turns, you know. Next up, we got um another championship fight, man. We have a championship fight. Um, 
at, at the smaller weight divisions. I believe it was flyweight. Don't quote me, but it was a uh, Julio Cesar Martinez versus um, Cordova. And man, that was a good fight, man. Martinez uh, dropped Cordova two times or three times. I can't quite remember. I think it was twice. And um, but Cordova he bounced back. You know what I'm saying? He he he, he did his thing to to fight well. But I thought that Martinez was one convincingly, and it's just crazy because um, sometimes I wonder if um, some of these corners are delusional. Sometimes the fighters are. You know, you caught up in the fight. You don't know exactly what's going on. You feel like you're winning. So I understand that. But in my opinion. I don't know how Cordovo felt so comfortable winning. You know, he started dancing around, doing the Ali foot shuffle. You can't touch this. Doing the Roy Jones wind up, you know what I'm saying? Maybe those those celebrations and those uh, those taunts that Bravado made him think he was winning, but I did not have him win it at all. But at the end of the fight, he was really surprised that he lost by the, via decision. I, I don't know what he was thinking, like you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like he was on. I ain't gonna say he was on his bicycle, but he was definitely moving around a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? And so Martinez did his thing, man. You know, and uh, yeah, he won that fight as he should have. And then next up, I hope I'm not missing anybody. Uh, next up, we have Arizlandi Lara going against uh, uh, Michael Zarafa, uh, another fighter out of Australia. You know what I'm saying? Big up Australia. They're doing their thing right now. Uh, Arizona Lara, man, he won by devastating, uh, I believe it was a left hand, man. Left straight. Bow! Oh, wow! Right down the middle, man. Knocked him out in the second round. Uh, Arizona Lara, Lara definitely put on it. Did his thing, man. Second round uh, uh, KO, man. KO. So it was good. He didn't beat the count. All right. Now, next next up, man. I know I'm cutting it close. I know I'm cutting it close. I'm trying my best. You know what I'm saying? Um, who, who we have next? Of course, we have Rolly Romero versus Isak Pitbull Cruz, man. This is what I thought was going to be the real main event. Even though it was a co-main event, I thought it was going to be the real main event. Particularly with uh, Keith Thurman having to pull out uh, of the Tim Zoo fight due to a bicep injury that he sustained. I was like, oh yeah. Uh, uh, even, even with that fight, I thought Isak Pitbull Cruz and Rolly Romero had the potential to be better than that. But even with him pulling out, that Fedora had to replace it. I was like, oh yeah. Rolly Romero and Esau People Cruz, in my opinion, should have been moved up to the main event. But hey, it, it doesn't matter. It's all good. They're fighting for Rolly Romero's title at super lightweight, uh, 140 pound division. And then it was an action packed fight, man. I, I'm talking about Rolly Romero. I think I'm, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the first round. That boy had that man doing a stanking leg. Oh, hey, Esau Pippo Cruz is getting to Rolly Romero early. And if y'all watch my videos, I told y'all that people were worried about, oh, yeah, because Rolly Romero got knocked up by Tank. Hey. <laughs> and and Pippo survived Tank. Well, I don't think that was the most... Um, relevant information when analyzing this fight i think that was just on the surface but if you scratch below the surface i think you would see that isak pitbull cruz a uh, uh, tank he, he he demonstrated his boxing ability his boxing acumen and boxing skills and fundamentals and he was able to keep pitbull off and i think people uh, uh, uh severely underestimated tank's ability to get around and get away from um and and, and avoid isak pitbull cruz's punches and if you look at Roland romero not only was he knocked out by tank like people are saying but he also ismail barroso the old man before it was stopped he was getting to Rolly Romero pretty easily too and I was like man Rolly Romero is gonna have a hard time keeping the aggressive pit bull off of him you know the relentless aggressive and durable pit bull off of him and sure enough we were right and pit bull got to him in eighth round stoppage and you know Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins had something to say about it check him out right here <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yo, man, this is the funniest thing. I know people are going to say, oh, Oscar Childish. Shut up, bitch. That's not childish, man. When you talk a lot of trash like Rolly Romero, and sometimes it gets back at you. I love Rolly because he's funny, and because he be talking trash, and he called he call Pitbull a little chihuahua. Well, that chihuahua was eating that Taco Bell, you know what I'm talking about? He was on your head top, because <laughs> he had a few he had a few chalupas and all that stuff, you know what I'm talking about? Because that, 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 that chihuahua damn sure looked like a Pitbull to me. And he was on Rolly Romero's head top. I thought it was all in fun, man. Then Bernard Hopkins jump in, man. I think that's all in fun, man. I love this part of boxing, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Rolly Romero... Took an L. My heart goes out to Rolly Romero, though, because he definitely did his thing. You know, he tried his best. You know what I'm saying? No shame in that. No shame in losing. I still want to see Rolly Romero fight. You know, I, 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 hey, if Devin Haney beats Ryan Garcia, like we, most of us anticipate, if the fight actually comes into fruition, actually, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if it does happen, I think Devin Haney beats Ryan Garcia. And who wouldn't be interested in the Ryan Garcia versus Rolly Romero fight? I know I still would be. So, Rolly Romero, keep your head up, bro. Keep going, man. Shout out to Esau Pippo Cruz. That 140 pound division is looking crazy. So now we got Devin Haney with the title, what? Super Matias with the title. What? Saw Pippa Cruz with the title. What? And who has the other title? Uh, 140. Dang it, it's, it's up in my mind right now. 
who has the other title, man? Is it Teofimo? Yeah, Teofimo has a title. So, yeah, man, that, 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 that's a crazy. It just got deeper. You know, I went for it. I think that's the best division in boxing, hands down. All right, next up to the main event, man. This was very crazy, man. Shout out to Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fedora. Tim Zhu had Fedora, you know, just like we anticipated, most of us anticipated. He had Fedora nose bleeding by the first round, man. He hit him with nice bow, right hand, left hand, bow, bow. He was getting everything he wanted, you know what I'm saying, get, uh, uh, infiltrating, uh, uh, infiltrating uh, Fedora's range. He was getting inside close quarters, bow, hit him with over lunging overhead rights. And then in the second round, I believe, man, uh, elbow came in, man. I want to talk about Tim Zhu. That elbow was so severe, man. I'm going to be honest. What, what is it? No contests are determined be, uh, fourth round or before, right? So the fourth round prior, it could be determined a no contest. It should have been called a no contest, man. The man had blood leak. It looked like a horror flick, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Somebody, uh, a smoochie in my chat said that it looked like a Kill Bill scene. I'm telling you, it looked like Walking Dead. Damn. I'm sorry. You know what I'm talking about? It was just too too bloody. It was definitely impairing his vision. He was handicapped that whole that whole match. People like to talk about the excuses and all this other stuff. Sometimes there are reasons and justifications for the way things transpire. And I'm not saying that Fedora necessarily would have lost, but he was definitely I know it's too early, it's only two rounds. He was definitely losing up until that point. And that definitely changed the 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 the, 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 the it shifted the momentum and it, and 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 it changed and it changed the uh the tide of the fight for sure. You know, so I really think that it just sucks because if you're Tim Zoo. Yo, know, first of all, big up, big up to Fundora. Cause after that cut happened, Fundora knew that his vision was impaired, and he used his jab, he used his range to 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 his advantage, as he should always. You know, the Tower of Inferno did his thing. He fought the appropriate fight to come out the victor. You know what I'm saying? But Tim Zoo, man, he's a he's a warrior. You know that's why we have to protect the fighters from themselves. Uh, especially being the corner and the refs and the doctors and stuff like that you know it was the first amazon it was the first amazon pay-per-view showing you know with pbc and all that so you know the last thing they wanted to do is stop the fight i'm not blaming anybody but i think the fight should have been stopped and also too man with the corner man listen listen to what tim zoo says right here in regards to the corner man the american commentary team seems to suggest that the corner didn't have the right ointment to fix it were you happy with what was there no comment so yeah, so like even if even even, even sorry, his, his cut men in particular, you know, they didn't really do a good job. I'm not blaming them, but it, it, even the commentary was like, man, they could have did a better job at stopping that bleeding, you know. But it was a very big gash and a severe cut, to be fair. But um, like I said, but my heart goes out to Tim Zoo because it's like not only did he have a matchup with uh, um with the inactive uh, Keith Thurman, who we didn't know what he was gonna do. Then he had, you know, that, that's one thing, you know, you don't, you don't know what kind of show Tim Keith Thurman or capabilities gonna bring to the ring. Number two. Keith Thurman got injured, man. He had a bison injury. He had to pull out the fight. Number three, the, the person that replaced him was somebody coming off a loss. You don't know how the fanfare is going to go with that, you know, in Fedora. Then Fedora, not only that, he's a tall, awkward guy. Number four, he's 6'5", or 6'6", six, six, really. 6'5 six, and a half to be exact. And then he's a southpaw. Oh my gosh, bro! Uh, 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 freaking, I, I call, I call, uh, I call Tim Zoo Limity Smicket, man. A series of unfortunate of events transpired, man. And then not only was he six five in the southpaw, then he had to take him in twelve days' notice. You see what I'm saying? And then it gets worse. Then they finally get in the fight where he where he, where he break where he uh busts open Fedora's mouth. And then in the second round he gets cut with a devastating elbow, man. Inadvertent. It was inadvertent. But he get hit with an elbow, man. And then his cut man couldn't handle the elbow. And then it doesn't get called a no contest, so then he loses his undefeated record, which doesn't really matter too much. You know, sorry, too much to Warriors, but it's still something. You don't want your first loss to come like this. And then you also lose all the belts and you lose the opportunity. In theory, to get your b biggest potential fight against Keith Thurman, uh, uh, Keith Thurman, against Terrence Crawford, you know people were projecting that'd be upward of thirty-eight million. Now I will say this. You don't want to look ahead of fighters. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Tim Zoo was looking far ahead. You can only address the questions as they're asked. I don't really think that Tim Zoo was looking past Sebastian Fedora. I think that he was addressing the questions as they were asked before the fight. You know, a lot of times people are asking about Terrence Crawford and, 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 and Earl Spence. But in hindsight, you know, maybe you just say, hey, I don't even want to talk about them right now. We go, we go stay on Fedora, which a lot of times he did. You know, he brought it back to Fedora, but, you know, they did stay a little time on there. People were a little mad at that. So you can't look, 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 look past your opponents. But I don't think Tim Zoo did. I think that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a wrong assessment. And unfair judgment being bestowed upon him you know in my opinion man shout out to tip zoo he's a warrior he kept going like he should have i i thought that um he definitely lost i thought fedora fought a good fight i don't know how that judge had tim zoo winning because if you go you know he just couldn't see man he just couldn't see that's a terrible way to lose i think it should have been a no contest for sure and um it wasn't and he lost now you know aerospace coming in the ring
people are mad at that. It's like, um, what do you want, man? Are you mad that, you know, first of all, Fundora came off a loss. And I was talking about where Brian Mendoza. It's funny that Brian Mendoza beat Fundora and knocked him out. And then for, and then Keith Thurman had to pull out. And then Fundora gets booted, gets, gets moved up to fight Tim Zhu. You know, so he got the opportunity. So I, I'm saying these things happen in boxing. It doesn't happen that often. But, you know, of course, we're going to, uh, hindsight's 2020, And, you know, of course, and we are going to be prisoners, prisoners of the moment. So with all that being said on both sides of the fence, I will also say this to be fair. That happens in boxing, man. You got you to roll with the punches. You know what I'm saying? You got to make the adjustments. So I want to know if people are really mad that a person coming off a loss is getting an opportunity or are they just mad at the person that's benefiting off the opportunity at Errol Spence? So Errol Spence is a PBC guy. He's a PBC fighter. He's in that stable. So naturally, they're going to look out for their own fighters. That's what happened. You know, it's, it's unfortunate for Terrence Crawford, but that's the, that's the risk you take by being a free agent. The free agent, you can go work with whoever you want, right? With, with, with little or less issues and it mitigates the issues with being associated with a big promotional brand. But the, the flip side is, is when it comes to situations like this, they're going to prioritize their guy. Same thing Matchroom does all the time. Same thing Top Rank will do. Same thing Golden Boy will do. And any other promotional company that you can think of so i don't think this is outside of um outside the realm of realism or or, or this is just pbc do it do it too much or this is a bad look for boxing i don't like it because because earl spence is coming off a loss but he's coming off a loss at a, at a different weight division to the number one pound for pound fighter in terrence crawford so but what i do think should happen i think should happen i think this makes more sense is that earl spence and tim zeus should fight since they're both coming off of the losses and then Terrence Crawford and Fedora should fight and then the winners get each other you know what I'm saying no matter how it goes now I will say this though I'll be very surprised if Terrence Crawford even wants to fight Fedora because it is it, it, it has been documented and noted that Terrence Crawford wants a, a a big payday and i don't think fedora provide is a dancing partner to get that from the business standpoint you know what i'm saying and either way terrence crawford versus fedora i got terrence crawford errol spence versus fedora i don't think errol spence should fight anymore man because i really think he, he has never recovered i've been said this since he first fought danny garcia ugas you know i don't think he ever recovered from his car today i just think people didn't pay attention because he won those fights and he lost and now people are paying attention to terrence crawford that because he lost terrence crawford but i i still think he doesn't look the same you know and i don't think he looks the same against fedora by but I think that even him not being the same, I think he'll have enough to beat Fondor, in my opinion, my humble opinion. But we shall see, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Do y'all want to see Fondor versus Bud? Or y'all want to see Fondor versus Spence? Or do you want to see Zoo versus Bud or Zoo versus Spence? Y'all let me know what y'all think about that, man. Shout out to Fondor. I don't want to take away any credit from him because it was an inadvertent elbow. It was not his fault. But it just sucks to be uh, Terrence, uh, Tim Zoo, man. I want to let, let Tim Zoo know, man. Hey, you are a warrior, bro. You, you held it down. You fought through adversity. You just came up short. Keep going, man. I want. I would love to see Tim Zoo fight. I'm, a, I'm there for his next one. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's just crazy that's how it happens in boxing sometimes i know i went well over the time y'all forgive me i told you i probably would because there's a lot to cover but yeah yeah man i love y'all for real man episode 13 of uh of uh, three minute round rundown we are out man let me know in the comments what y'all think about this coverage we out peace god bless remember with god we can do anything without god we are nothing also most importantly happy christ resurrection day and it, aka easter man y'all enjoy your loved ones man tell somebody that you love them god bless from the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets